Pillow, I want to tell you a story because nobody seems to be listening to me. When I married my wife, I thought I was going to have the happiest family for the first time in my life. Beautiful little girl I helped raise and a wife that loved me dearly. I brought her here, my wife here in 71, but my daughter died before I could bring her in 75 during the takeover of Vietnam. But we were lied to. Anyway, between 71 and 75, my wife didn't want sex that much. After 75, she said, do what you have to do and hurry up. No foreplay. Well, by the late 70s, I was getting ED from Agent Orange, I think. So, she was, ha ha, you can't do anything anyway. Um, and laughing at me, I almost didn't have my daughter in 1980. But let me go back as a child. As a child, I became homeless at seven or eight years old because my parents lost everything due to doctor bills. Thrown out on the streets. My parents didn't care about me. I didn't really have a family. I grew up myself. Didn't come home sometimes for a few days. I'm in foster care. I was in Job Corps. Uh, you name it, I've grown up the hard way. I was a workaholic. I always had money in my pocket as a kid. Cutting lawns, shoveling snow, stealing, etc. <coughs> In 1975, I bought this house. Some elderly ladies across the street came over the second night we lived here and screamed and yelled that I'd better not hurt this house. It was part of the Underground Railroad. And I promised them I wouldn't. It was going to be the only home I've ever had in my life. But let me go back to the first night we moved in, September 16th, 1975. Some big black snakes walked through the living room. I'm sitting there, oh shit. And then we saw some rats in the house to find that there were thousands of them living in the walls. I had to dig a trench around the house in the coming years and plug all the holes with cement to try to stop them, killing hundreds of snakes a year. In fact, last year, it was down to two snakes I killed. Two years ago, we found 10 snakes in my car repair garage in the backyard. Uh, not the snakes, the skins. But anyway, let's get back to 75. I had the furnace rebuilt, an old coal furnace with a gun unit stuck in the bottom of it. A month later, in November, the chimney catch fire. I didn't think about cleaning a chimney because it was the first time I owned a house. The fire department came, dripped water all over the inside of my house, tore out some interior walls to make sure the fire hadn't escaped from the chimney because the chimneys were inside walls, um, and let it burn out. He said, now you don't need your chimney clean. It didn't even hurt your chimney. Uh, but the county came out and condemned my home said if you had any kind of damage to your home by any re anything, your home was automatically condemned and not rebuildable because they wanted to get rid of everybody up and down Route 1 so that developers could get the land for nothing. Um, I had to fight them for months until somebody in the county sued <coughs> and got that law overturned as unconstitutional. Meanwhile, I'm fighting snakes and rats and everything. Um, uh, in December of 75, the snow plows come past to break off my second story gutters and my second story windows and my first story windows. A lot of those second story windows had glass that thick at the bottom where the glass had sunk down from a century or two of sitting in the paint. Um, the next summer, after weeding and cutting and clearing the backyard down to the swamp, 
I found raw sewage all over the place. The county did too. I didn't know the neighborhood up across the street had piped all of their toilets into the creek just south of me and just north of me. And whenever it rained a little extra, uh, it all came in my backyard, plus my sewer was going in the backyard, so they condemned it under health department situations that time. I started my own business called Rain's Used Appliance. I'd been doing car repairs since the day I'd moved in, uh, because I had a lot of customers when I lived in a townhouse in Laurel, an apartment in Laurel, with my wife. I'd go out and fix their car in the parking lot. Um, this house has been a nightmare. The inspectors kept hitting me. I'm not allowed to replace this four foot of wall. I'm not allowed to replace this eight foot of wall on all the additions that were added on. I'm not allowed to let the back half of the house fall into the swamp because it was pulling the house over and coming unglued, unnailed anyway. So I pried it loose and let it fall. A lot of the back additions that were on 40-foot stilts. Uh, brought it up, reburn it as firewood. Um, it's been a constant battle. I got stacks that thick of zoning violations. They even one year came out and said I had to put up a stockade fence from the, on the property next door that I rent uh, from Bradshaw. Or they were going to fine me $500 a day. Okay. I put it up. The next year they came out and said, if it ain't down by tomorrow morning, we're starting $500 a day because that's an illegal fence. 1980. My father dies. My sister uh, tries to take my house away from me, tries to take all my belongings, my bank accounts, go to court and says everything's my dad until I proved it wasn't, nothing was his. Um, then, she, then they called in saying I beat my wife, <coughs> I beat my kids, I work them as slaves, I rape my wife all the time, and I was a roaring alcoholic, drug addict, and killed a lot of women and children in Vietnam. Well, let me look at what I did in Vietnam. By the way, I'm mentally ill, according to the county now. I'll get into that later. I drove a truck full of explosives and the ammo and everything to fire and support base camps. That's right. Every time I got shot at or mortared or rocketed at, I stopped my truck, jumped out, and returned fire. That would make me mentally ill, wouldn't it? No, I stepped on the gas, ducked, and got the hell out of there so it was all over with. Within 15, 20, 30 seconds, I was out of their range. I never shot my gun at the enemy. I was in a lot of combat, but I never fired my gun. I was too busy picking up wounded soldiers and delivering new soldiers to the firefight right outside the base camp etc etc I was always driving and if you ever know anything about a deuce and a half without power steering you can't take a hand off the wheel and try to shoot back especially when you're going like this down the damn cross country how in the hell could you hit anything anyway so and by the way the sister that called in saying I was a lunatic uh, having all these flashbacks of all the women and children I killed and all the drugs I used. Her second husband had the biggest drug house at College Park on Route 1. 40, 50 people were sitting around his house 24 hours a day, smoking, shooting, injecting, you name it, drugs, while they all supposedly went to the University of Maryland back in the uh, early 70s. She had so many drugs that she could talk to God, Jesus, um, you name it, dead relatives. She got herself declared uh, mentally unable to work in the late 70s and for the rest of her life until she died 
about five years ago. Uh, she was on Social Security Disability, is mentally unstable and mentally ill, unable to work. But with all of these reports to the police, every time I went out of my driveway, the police stopped me. It's all in my book at Born Screwed in the USA. Anyway, in 1985, I'd bring what I thought was my wife's daughter from Vietnam. My brother-in-law couldn't come unless he brought the daughter. He lied, keeping my wife's daughter alive uh, from 75 to 85, so we'd keep sending support money so he could live like a king with his wife and kids. And he kept telling us he didn't want to bring her. But he brought an illegal alien that was 22, and I forced her to go to school because she was supposed to be my wife's daughter at 15. The school systems teach you to say abuse, and you get a free house. You can do anything you want in a foster home. At least she could. She was sleeping with a 23-year-old man at his place, or my brother's-in-law's place. Drinking, drugs, sex, everything. The foster care didn't take care about her. But anyway, the state took her away January 2nd, uh, January 2nd of 86. Only a few months in my home. My brother-in-law says, I stole his money, worked him as slaves, beat him, beat their kids, beat my wife and threatened to deport my wife if she wouldn't lie to protect me and this and that. <laughs> I tell my wife this. She screams and cusses her brother out. Her brother says, I'm lying. And the police is lying. He never said a thing. Well, social services called me in from Anne Arundel County and told me what he had said, that I stole his money. I said, check his bank account. In 10 months, he lived in my house he had new dishes, pots and pans, silverware, new sewing machine, new clothing, new TVs, new stereo equipment. He had a car and $8,000 in the damn bank that him and his wife earned. How much money did I take from him? They didn't make that much money an hour. And they hardly worked any overtime. I paid their room and board here. And they did this to me. Anyway, the county tells the girl, okay, I see your ID saying you're 22. I see your real name. We're going to let you change your name at, on high school records from Nop Hong Don to Nop Ki Wing. Uh, so you graduate with a degree in your real name, which they did by January 5th of 86. They threatened me and threatened me and threatened me, saying I have to plea bargain a fourth degree sex offense or they're going to charge me with child abuse, assault and battery of a minor. Well, I refused to do it because I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Meanwhile, every time I'm going out of my driveway, the police are stopping me, checking my iced tea and uh, making me walk a line, thinking I'm drunk or drugged. And they asked me if I'm having flashbacks from Vietnam and everything. Social services is still harassing my kids at school from 1980. Trying to tell them they, I need help. That they have to confess that I abused them. Um, this is a great life I've lived in America. Well, anyway, in 87, they take me to court. It said I was arrested March 1st of 86 for a crime I committed July of 86. They also stated in the indictment, I'll have to retape this later.